All right, folks, this is version nine of Tesla's software, the long anticipated, I think, software where they completely overhaul the design, add some new features, and I think improve the experience of the software on the touchscreen. So let's just quickly go over a few of the highlights of this. Now, I'll say right off the top, my car does not have autopilot of any sorts. I'm doing old school driving, two hands on the wheel, which I kind of like actually. So I won't be able to show you any autopilot features in addition to the new feature where Tesla's using the front facing camera as a dash cam. So you've got a couple of new features that are enabled in the mobile app. One, you can control the media from, let's say if you're in the back seat and you've got access to the Tesla app, you can now play songs and pause them and skip them as you choose. Additionally, you can initiate a software update now from the mobile app. So you don't have to go out to your car just to install the new software if you're inside your house. And then lastly, with the mobile app, you can now send directions from, for example, Google Maps to your car from your phone. Moving along, you've got a new application launcher, which we'll all show you here in just a moment. Climate control has been completely reworked. In navigation, there are a few new features, including highway exit information. You can tap or pull down the turn-by-turn -turn list to see additional details. And easily accessed voice navigation settings can be, and easily accessed navigation settings directly from the turn-by-turn. -turn. Use HOV lanes, and you can now add that as an option to default to when utilizing navigation. Traffic view has been restyled to highlight problematic areas. Media gets a redesign as well as controls. And lastly, we now have the anticipated Tesla Tari. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into some of the main features here. The first thing that you'll notice right off the top is that maps looks a lot more Model 3-like. For example, these icons here are identical to what is in the Model 3, which had stylized icons first. Instead of having to tap the screen and access the apps up here, they've now moved them all the way down here. You'll see there's a lot more applications to access from this bottom panel here. You've got an easy access music button here, which will go into all of your favorites are saved here and you can scroll left right so no longer an up down which i think i kind of like and then your options for type of media radio streaming phone tune in and then search are down below you've got your equalizer as well as allowing mobile control from the app which i'll show you right now okay so what i'm going to do here is access the app and you'll see here when the car is turned on and or in drive, you'll have media. And then you've got the ability to pause, play, move forward or backwards, control volume, and skip through favorites. Now the only catch with this is that you have to have the mobile app downloaded to your phone. So for example, if you have kids in the back that like to control the music, you're gonna have to give them your phone, most likely, to control. That's probably a downside if you don't want your kids playing with other things on your phone, in my opinion. One of the other notable things about this layout is maps is the primary thing on the screen and everything else is secondary. So, as you can see here, I can drag up the music to make it larger, which is probably an 80% view. I can go 40% and then 10% and then I can remove it completely. The other apps that used to be up at the very top are now here in this icon. You've got calendar, which is virtually unchanged. Look at that, I've got a haircut coming up tomorrow. Thanks for the reminder. Energy graph, this looks very similar as well with the exception of these little toggles have been redesigned. Web browser. This one as well, you've got more real estate if you swipe up or you can swipe down and then away. Web camera, which will access the web camera while you're driving. Now you cannot move it up. Let's see what happens if you, yeah, so that is fixed to the bottom. 
It used to be with version 8 and earlier, you could toggle this top or bottom depending on your preference. And you've got uh, the phone app. This looks virtually the same in my opinion. You've got the same options, it's just designed a little bit more modern looking. And then charging. You all will be happy to see that I've, I'm leaving my charging limit at 80%, yay for me. And uh, it looks like, I, I did have this on, but it looks like that's been removed for some reason. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. I did have it set to 2 a.m. Could probably do 3 a.m. in reality. So that is charging. Let's remove that. And moving from left to right, you have the seat heaters. And uh, again, this looks a lot more like Model 3 design. You also have one on the, on the right-hand side too. And uh, if you have the winter package, you should be able to access the back seats as well from this area. Now, the HVAC has been redesigned. You can do a few things. So if you want to adjust the temperature, you can swipe up or down like this, or you can tap manually. This seems a little bit more intuitive as a driver. I'm probably not going to do this. I'm probably gonna tap. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. So if, if, I, if I turn off sync, now you've got dual climate, whereas the old version of the software, you had these consistently, and if you adjusted one of these, it would adjust the other one as well until you turned off sync. But now, if sync is on, it just combines it into one. If you tap the fan, you've got more options here in terms of where the, the fan is coming from, speed, auto, power, where it's being vented, uh, AC, and then camper mode or climate on. I wish they would call it camper mode. I'm not sure why they didn't. But uh, if I turn off the power, then the temperature grays out, you know it's not on. Tap the fan to turn it back on. All right, so let's tap the fan to remove it. You've got defrosters, front and back, and then volume. If you swipe up, you can see it adjust, or you can tap up or down. As I mentioned before, if you open up a Maps application, for example, Google Maps. So let's say I want to go to the Stanley Hotel from where I'm at. I'm going to enter in the coordinates or address, and I'm going to look for a share icon, which is right here. And right now I've set it up to have Tesla right there. If you don't see the Tesla icon and you're using iOS, you need to go to more and then make sure the toggle is turned on. And then you can also move it to the desired location. I'm just gonna turn it there. So I tap the Tesla and then it sends it to the car. Okay, so it's wanting me to confirm. Stanley Hotel. Normally if it gets it right, it'll pop up immediately. And as I mentioned before, you've got a new settings icon here that will give you access to more things like turn by turn, trip planner, online routing, and you can turn on avoid ferries, avoid tolls, or use HOV lanes. I don't use HOV lanes too often, so I'm gonna leave that turned off. And last but not least, it is the Atari games that you can play from here. So I'm gonna let the Easter eggs pop open. Tap Atari. And there's a few games here. This one is Centipede, and I don't have too much experience playing Atari games, so I'm not even going to attempt it. But if I wanted to go full screen, I can tap this one, tap OK, and it's... I can actually control this from the from the steering wheel icons. All right. How do I fire? Yep. So you press the scroll wheel to fire. 
you can use the scroll wheel up and down to go up and down, and then the, uh, the, the buttons left and right can be used, which is kind of cool. Can I? No way! I can use the steering wheel too? That's awesome! Okay, this makes it tons better. Okay, I guess I should probably... In addition to Centipede, I've got Missile Command. We've got Lunar Lander. And then we also have Asteroids. All of which you can control. No, this is crazy. Oh, I'm really bad at this. Okay. And Controls has been redesigned as well to look a lot more like the Model 3 design. All the features are pretty much the same. I do like this. This is a nice redesign. You can do the same drag of the sunroof to open it up, stop it, and then close it, which I think is kind of cool. And then I'll just go quickly through these lights, driving, vehicle, Display, trips, navigation, safety and security, service. If you have autopilot, of course, you're going to see that option here. You're also, if you've got the winter package, you'll see that. You'll see air suspension. So you see a few more options if you have some of those nice bells and whistles. All right, so that wraps up this overview of version 9 of Tesla's in-car software. Hope you enjoyed it. What's your favorite part? I think for me, one of my favorite parts is being able to send navigation from my phone to the car automatically. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you found this video helpful and insightful, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. See you on the next video.